There will be no spoilers here, just some great Kickstarter pickstarters for the week of April 29th, 2019. Hostage Negotiator Career is the conclusion to Van Ryder's Hostage Negotiator line. This is a solo only game in which you are playing the role of the titular hostage negotiator, trying to figure out how you can talk a crazy psychopath down uh, via phone or what have you, depending on the scenario, and making sure you rescue all the people, get them out as many as you can safely. Uh, it's a difficult game that involves some luck, some dice rolls, and some decision making. They've had a number of expansions and smaller packs to add on to it. This career mode adds, as you would think from that descriptor, uh, a sort of campaign that you can actually play through multiple connected hostage negotiator sessions, and in between each one, you'll be experiencing the chance to maybe get a promotion, actually change your role, going through personal things in your character's personal life. Each session that you play, uh, each scenario will represent one year, and an entire campaign, they said, will take uh, maybe five or six hours. It's not a legacy game or anything like that. It's something you can keep replaying. So if you like the hostage negotiator gameplay, this just gives it a little bit more structure and more connected components to it. And uh, as they said, this is going to be, for now at least, the last of these installments. It also comes with two new abductor packs. Uh, you do need the original game to still play this. It's not standalone, uh, but it adds all that stuff onto it. And of course they have levels for more, if you want the original stuff too. Yeah, I believe, I can't remember if you did on stream actually your own separate video of this. So There, uh, there is a solo play video on our channel of me losing in this game. Spoilers. <laughs> but, but no, we had spoilers, even though you said there wouldn't be any. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> yeah. But the game itself is really cool. It definitely was a lot of fun to watch you play that too, even if I wasn't playing. I am really curious what it means of personal stuff. Now I just imagine like, you know, there's, you go through a chapter where you negotiate to save like, you know, five people. Next thing you have to negotiate who's going to, how you're going to split the bill up at a bar <laughs> and maybe haggling at the marketplace. Well, there are cards that will give you stress and there are, I assume things like maybe there's trouble at home <laughs> with your, in your relationships, you know. It, negotiate uh, with your teenage child or what <laughs> curfew will be. And there are, like I said, it's not legacy, but there are some choices you have to make and there are going to be envelopes to open. So there's some really cool stuff in there. I recommend if you haven't gotten into this and you like solo games, this is 100% one you should be looking at. It's $40 just for all the new stuff. Uh, then you can pay more and more if you want to add in the old stuff onto it. Runica and the Six-Sided Spellbooks from Foxtail Games will have you take on the role of magical students trying to solve these runic puzzles and maybe get a little help from your professors. The way the game works is you will draft dice and then put them on this board. However, you can only put them on certain sides, blue maybe on the left, yellow on the bottom, green on the right, so on and so forth. And you're trying to solve these sort of puzzles that'll be in the center area, like two green dice on top with maybe a blue die here. In order to get those though, you can't just put the dice down. Sometimes you'll need to actually change where you can place dice. So the board will actually come with a little rotating thing. So you can actually rotate this sort of upper circle around the puzzle area. So you can change where you place dice. As well as maybe use certain dice for abilities such as rearranging them or even asking a professor for help to destroy dice or move the ring even more so to really make sure you can get those spells before other players do. This looks like in a really fun puzzle game where you have to really decide how you're going to use these dice to gain as many points as possible. But there have been some concerns with analysis paralysis in the uh, four-man team because, for example, the professor abilities are first come, first serve. So if you plan and you're third and you have to wait until the first two players do the thing, then they take the professor you were hoping for. It's going to take some time for you to think how you're going to get maybe that certain puzzle plan that you're hoping for. Uh, there's also a little bit annoying gotcha. I think you can finish someone's, uh, the projects are open, uh, thin somewhere to splendor kind of thing. Uh, so if someone com completes the one you are aiming for and then the new one comes out and doesn't help you, that can be a bit of a pain as well. But that puzzle solving aspect with the turning wheel and using different abilities just sounded so cool. I thought it was worth mentioning. And it also, like one of the videos I watched actually suggested like maybe just tweaking the rules so you can get around that as well. Yeah, I, I really like the, the concept of, like you said, I mean, I, first of all, I just like drafting in general and dice drafting mm -hmm. is fun, but making it feel like you're actually casting the different spells almost in the, I don't know, 
any kind of magical sort of way from any kind of fiction that you like and needing to make the runes align the right way. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I wasn't crazy about the art style of this one or like the presentation of it didn't really grab me, but the concept of those mechanics, I think, seems solid. I do really love how the mechanics work. I love the puzzle-solving mechanic, and unlike other dice games where I do really enjoy them, I mean, role player is probably my favorite of all of them, mm -hmm. but you can place the die, but with the wheel restriction being like, right now only you can play red, red on left or something, I think adds a really fun twist, and that you can manipulate the wheel too really helps and makes maybe try to come up with a really fun, interesting strategy, because even if there is that analysis paralysis, which, I mean, is not unique to this game. We've seen other games have it. Sure. You know, when you do solve the wheel and you're like, oh, I can do this, you feel really good. Yeah, that sounds right to me. And it is $49, but I don't think that's crazy for these sort of heavy dice game drafting games, at least uh, to my knowledge. Well, uh, you can take a look, see if those concerns that I mentioned in the comment sections are too much for you or they're worth it to have a little fun. Complexity is our next pick from Big Kid Games. That's complexity made up of complex and city. It's a sci-fi theme wherein you are trying to build homes for different races of aliens that need to find new places to live because uh, their sun exploded. That kind of a thing is happening. And each player is going to have their own set of tiles building their own city. And every turn you're gonna play one and you're trying to uh, make certain combinations of colors in certain areas because once you do so you will be able to build complexes of those colors and use them for different actions depending on which colors you decide to make. Uh, those will let you do things like get points in the future, uh, move things around on your own board, get special types of cards that can help you out, and ultimately at the end of the game you're going to score points based on the makeup of your city as well as in between at the end of certain rounds you're going to be trying to get points based on what the different ambassadors want you to have. And depending on the ambassador, one of them may be looking for a certain color or some a different type of pattern or way they're connected. And you can actually influence which of those are going to be scored each round uh, based on how you spend these seeds that you get. So as players, you're sort of trying to vote on which one of those ambassadors you want to happen first early on, and then it's gone. So you might want to try to stop someone else from getting too far ahead by doing one of them earlier or you might decide, oh, I have a good amount of points in that card now, so I would like to try to influence that ambassador. So that, that was relatively interesting. Um, just the, the overall, the design of it looked solid, looked fun. Uh, it's uh, you know, a tile-laying game, uh, but with, I think, a little more to it than maybe some other tile-laying games have. Uh, so if that's the kind of thing that you like, maybe you'll like it. <laughs> um, it goes for $39, and you can back it now. It's called Complexity. Facing the Titan is a new RPG with a small twist. There is no GM involved. These are all designed to be one shots, which will actually come with six different Titans, where the focus of the story is you are a company designed to take down the Titan before it's too late. But it is designed to really focus on not really combat, but what is the cost you're willing to do to end this Titan? A GM was RPG, we had to pick it to talk about it because that's such a weird concept. Well, we kind of had saw that in Ten Candles, uh, which is where you know the players share the storytelling uh, uh, responsibilities. I think Fiasco is also a similar kind of thing. But yeah, it is definitely interesting, uh, and and you know the fighting a giant monster thing is is. Cool. I mean, we we always enjoy giant our, our kaiju's. I think it wasn't that long ago there was another RPG. I believe it was called Age of Titan, which was the, basically the same concept, uh, but wasn't GM-less. It was like more traditional. I also don't know if it was this, like most of these they said like are designed to be like one shots because you're really just seeing what happens in mm -hmm. that. Yeah, but it seems like this one had some cool, weird mechanics with the dice and how you decide exactly mm -hmm. what happens in the story. So yeah, it, it definitely had some interesting stuff to it, I thought. And it's really, I think, just $8 for the PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take a look. There are some other pledge levels, I think, more for helping design stuff. Yeah, I think they had, if you want the physical one, it, like you have to go through drive through RPG, so it's not exactly built into the pledges. Uh, but you can just get that PDF, like you said, for 8 bucks. So check it out if uh, you're having too much of a hassle of deciding who was going to be GM, whether everyone wants to do it or no one wants to. Uh, you can face this Titan instead. 
Ark of Atlantis from Mortensen Games is a worker placement game with a very unique twist. Everyone is placing their workers on different tiles and they are trying to collect resources as well as treasures that will give them points later on. The resources they can use to build ships, they can use those ships as well for their own personal worker placement spaces to produce more resources. But as the game goes on, some of those tiles are going to sink. At certain points in the game, you're going to reveal a card and flip a tile over, and if, it, if that tile comes up twice, then it is just gone. The workers that were there uh, will be now swimming in the water, <laughs> and you will have to spend resources to get them back. And then eventually, by the end of the game, there will be no more tiles left. Everything will have sunk. So as time goes on, there are fewer and fewer options for you to place your workers on, and you don't know which tiles are going to be the first to go. So you have to figure out where you want to try to go to get what you want, uh, as well as building your ships to you know try and make up for the fact that you may not be able to do those actions in the future. I just thought this was a really cool idea. Uh, you know, it's, it's well, it seems pretty simple in terms of it's not like a lot of worker placement games that I think of where there are many different things that are very complicated. In this one, it's like they're all just kind of get a resource, but then they disappear. <laughs> so Forbidden Island meets worker placement. For, yeah, Forbidden Island meets worker placement and it, uh, competitive. <laughs> it's definitely interesting, and I wonder how, because uh, when I usually think worker placement, I usually think more of a hero-style game where things are less random. So mm. seeing tiles disappear randomly, I think, I'm really curious how people would feel about that. I mean, yeah. I'm up for it because it sounds like it'd be hilarious, fun. I think games. worker placement has, uh, you know, made its way enough into other. Oh types no, we're, of games no, I, that... yeah, we're definitely growing more. But I say, like, off the top of my head, that's the first that comes to mind. Yeah. Well, anyway, you can let us know what you think. Check it out for yourself. Ark of Atlantis. Uh, to back it, it's thirty nine dollars. So those were our picks for this week. We do want to add one other one, which is Quartermaster. We actually did a video on this, so when you check out their page, you can see us talk about it there. But until then, uh, we hope you enjoy, and let us know if there's any Kickstarters we didn't mention. Otherwise, let us know if you're going to back the GMless RPG going solo or any of the other games that involve multiple players. Talk to us in those comments down below, uh, or follow us elsewhere on social media. Until we see you again, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons so you get more board game content from Roll for Crit. Do it. Do it now.